Hello everyone, I'm Chen Yao Wang and I'm a PhD candidate at Cornell University. Today I'm going to present our paper Video Post VR, also in virtual reality character animation with online videos. This work has been done during my internship at Autodesk Research. Other amazing collaborators are Chen Zhao, George Fitzmaurice, and Fraser Anderson. Traditionally, when users want to create a VR content, for example, character animation, the usual workflow would be user open a, a 3D animation tool on the desktop and post in the characters, and then put on the headset, check in the VR, and take down the headset and go back to the desktop and then try to refine it. As you can see, this process could be tedious and time consuming. You probably think of other immersive authoring tools try to answer this challenge already. So for example, like animation VR, and this allows users to post the character directly inside the VR to generate those keyframe-based animation. And post MMR is similar, but allow users to, to do that in the mixed reality setting. Uh, another concept that you, uh, other tool will utilize is the recording and playing techniques. So like the tool like MindShow that people can record their motion and, and apply that motion to the virtual character inside the VR or other research prototype like XR Director utilize the same technique. These immersive also tools are great, but creating different kinds of 3D human motion is still pretty challenging. If we can record our motion in the VR, that's pretty great but it only limits us to generate those motion that can perform by the users. We know there are different kinds of 3D human motion data set online, but unfortunately it only offer limited motion and usually it's single person. And if we use in a 3D animation tool to generate the mo uh, motions, uh, it requires prior knowledge and it also time consuming. So how do we answer this challenge? The key idea for video post VR is to utilize the human motion in online video. There are so many different kinds of human motion we can find online. For example, if we search sports, as you can see here, we can search so many different human motion in different kinds of sports. And that's just the sports. You can imagine we can search different motion for different professions like teachers, students, doctors, over even the motion that people do in those social events like dancing or having fun in the party. This would, if we can utilize this motion in the process of creating character animation, that would be really, really useful. So that's the key idea for video post VR. So user wear the headset and inside the virtual reality, they just search the video with the motion they want, and then the system extract the motion and then can apply to the character directly inside the VR. So, so how do we achieve that? So the system pilot of the video post VR have two major components. The first one is generate the motion data set. And then have, after we have this motion data set, then we also implement a VR application to allow user to access those motion in the motion data set and further edit it inside the virtual reality. So let's take the first uh, component, generating motion data set. And it takes several steps to achieve that. So the first step we do is to apply the 2D, uh, 2D human pose and uh, estimation and tracking the open pose, as you can see in the video here. And then in the next few steps, the goal is to extract the 3D human pose from the video and then associate each of the human pose to a specific person in the video. And how do we achieve that? So to associate a 3D human pose to a specific person in the 2D video, that's really a challenging problem in the 3D domain. So our idea is to utilize the 2D human pose tracking in the 2D domain. As you can see in the video here on the top left is the 2D pose estimation and tracking result. You can see in the 2D that we can really easier to track each person in the video. 
And on the top right, we can extract the city human posts. So the thing we want to achieve is we want to associate those human posts for every video frame to the person, uh, person in the video. How do we do that? We uh, we compute the 3D joints in the 3D human pose and then project it back to the image plane and then try to find the closest match between these two set of joints and then associate that person to uh, that 3D human pose as you can see the result on the bottom. So you can see here that the 3D human pose is associated to a specific person that represents by different color, the green and the blue there. And you can, one thing you want to highlight is even some part of the video that people are facing by each other, you can see that uh, you can still associate to the right person, the green person and the blue person there. Okay, now we have the 3D human pose, but unfortunately those 3D human pose is a data related to the root joint, which is a hip joint of the human body. So in other words, that it doesn't really know how people move in the original video. So we, we solve this problem by utilizing another uh, technique, it's root net, that it can help us to generate the root joint 3D pose relative to the camera in the original video. So let's take a look on the right side of the demo video. As you can see, the person in the video, when they move uh, like closer to the video, the person, the avatar, the motion, it, the, will also move closer uh, in the 3D space. So you can see that uh, after is not performing the motion in the same space, it actually like try to perform the motion in the similar way that how the person moved in the original video. So here's the motion data set uh, that we generated for the user study later. We download 161 different human motion with different scenario. You can see not just sports, but also some casual activity like running, walking, or even some work-related activity like uh, meeting oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can also see it's not just a single person, it can also support for multi-person video, as you can see here. Now we have the human pose. The next thing we want to uh, do is to let user can easily to search the motion they want. Imagine that user download 100 video with different motion. It'll become hard for them to find a specific motion they want in the later phase. One simple approach would be uh, just let them manually annotate it, but we can imagine this really a tedious and time consuming process. So how do we uh, solve this problem is we utilize the open AI click model which can generate a feature embedding that calls the image domain to the text domain. So more specific, for example, there are three videos here, and then for each video, we compute the feature embedding for per frame, one frame per second. And then we store all this feature embedding for all the video and all the video frame in the motion data set. And then later, when user have, want to find a specific motion, like they want to find a tennis, and then the system will compute the similarity for all this uh, store feature embedding of all the videos. And then we will compute the k-nearest neighbor and tr try to rank each video, the relevance of the, those videos based on the number of the k-nearest neighbor friends in the video. So you can see here the yellowish color, the small block there, that means that the similarity score is higher. So you can imagine the two video on the left because tennis, they are more yellow. So you can see the score really is more, um, is much higher than the right one, the basketball video. And then, so one thing I want to highlight here is all this is doesn't require any manual annotation. So user just need to download and then make a query and then they can search the motion they want. So here's the example. So if a user want to search the tennis in our motion data set, and then just type the tennis, and then you can see that system can retrieve the, the video and the motion with the, uh, the tennis motions. And another example is if we search the running, and then you can see the system can retrieve those running video with the motion. Again, this doesn't require any uh, uh, manual annotation process.
process. So once we have uh, the 3D human pose and user can query the motion they want, the last thing we need is just convert those 3D motion to the, uh, the format that Unity can support so that you, we can later visualize it in the VR. So now we have the motion data set. Let's take a look about the second component that how we design the uh, VR application to allow user to asset those motion and editing in the VR. So this is done by a really classic, uh, really basic uh, kind of uh, architect. So basically uh, we implement a VR application and then user can make a query and then that link to the Python web server. And then just like we mentioned, you can find the relative video and the motions and then we can download those uh, data from the uh, Amazon S3. So here's a demo video. So let's say if a user want to uh, implement a tennis uh, scenario, so they search a tennis, they want to find a tennis motion. So they just type tennis. And then now you can see that uh, they can see the video and also along with the instructed 3D motion. So they can easily navigate to different motion with different video and then try to find the one they really like. So for example, if the user really like this one, they just grab it out and then they can view it much closer in the life size scale like this. They look the take a closer look of the motion. If they really like it, now just pick it up and then apply to the character and the character will perform that motion directly. And once the avatar applied, those, we, once the user applied the animation, they can find the editing. It's like if they can try to train the motion to the part they want. They can also move the characters around and then they can also try to rotate the characters or they can try to grab the characters to and then put that uh, put that character in the places they want in this immersive environment. Again, they can also adjust the animation speed. That's for the single user motion. So let's say that I want to uh, create a, a visualization about like four people playing volleyball. So then user can just select four uh, avatars and then the system can synchronize the motion with the motion in the video, as you can see here. One thing I want to highlight is you can take a look about the global movement that how people move in the video is also being reconstructed and also visualized in this like the four uh, virtual characters. And how about user want to generate a motion that is different from the original videos? We using the blending feature to allow user to do that. So user can combine different motion by specify different body mass. So for example, here, the user apply the boxing motion for the upper body and then using another wrong, wrong motion to the lower body. So then the motion they can create is oh, uh, people is boxing on the upper body and then while running. So another uh, feature, useful feature that we provide is sometimes we want to create its own uh, constant motion path for specific animation like here. So we can specify that and then try to further refine it and uh, to further refine the characters to the thing that user want. So to understand the user experience, we conduct a 10 participant user study. During the study, Python completed tasks with different features that we implemented in the video post VR, such as the some feature that you saw earlier in the video, and then like edit a video timeline and try to create a multi-user scenario or try to combine different uh, uh, motion from different videos. A major takeaway from our user study is that participants feel video post VR is easy to learn and also easy to use. And they also satisfied with the result they created, the motion they created. And then just like the two notes that from the participant that they feel it's really, the video post is really extremely lightweight and they intuitive and you feel like anybody could pick it up. And then it could be utilized to be a, a, a prototyping tool to quickly to generate some different kinds of human motions. From a, a small like the brainstorming workshop with some designer, we also like kind of like listing different kind of the scenario that can be really useful for the video post VR. As you can see here, not just for the casual activity, even some more work, rea uh, work reality activities across different uh, domains, like game, entertainment, and therapy, or even the education. So yeah, so that's the video post VR, and thank you so much.